Okay. Hopefully we have some sound now. We had to start over because uh, I was told in that we didn't have any sound. So I'm hoping we do now. So I got to wait for somebody to join so you can tell me is there sound. But meanwhile, this live will be a little bit about where we've been, what we've been doing. I know you guys have seen some of the videos kind of explaining what we've been doing, but I'm going to go in a little bit more detail and kind of tell you what our plans are for the summer and, you know, go on from there. So uh, this is the furthest uh, north that we've been. And so we've been to New York City, but not, but just for a couple of hours. Okay, good. Just for a couple of hours before. And so I want to kind of tell you all about our trip thus far what we've been doing, what's been going on. I got my co-host here who's laying out in the background. He might get up and make a surprise, a surprise appearance and kind of tell you where we are, what's going on, and what our plans are for the summer. And so I was trying to give everybody a chance to kind of get in just so you don't have to keep like repeating yourself. Hey, Doc, I hope everything's going great. And I was, I was saying before that when we got here last week, so at some point it snowed here. And so with the snow, rain, snow, rain, it has really softened the ground like tremendously here. And so this last snowstorm last week took down power lines and trees. And so the campground we're at now, a lot of trees down. There's a lot of cleanup that has to take place. And so I, um, let me see. I uh, think... I need to delete the last one because everybody's showing up for the other live and not this one. So I'm going to go in really fast and delete that one so it won't be there. And then people won't go to that one. They'll come to this one. All right. Because I just got a message saying, I can't hear you. All right. So where we are now, I'm, I'm going to get to it. But uh, yeah, where we are now, the trees are, a lot of trees. Are, I took out a few buildings, like cabins, like literally in the cabin. Right, right through the beam in the top. Um, a lot of trees down where you can't even go down some of the roads. And this campground is humongous, but I'm going to get to that. So, as you know, we left Tennessee about two and a half weeks ago and landed in Gatlinburg, which was awesome. And we stayed at a campground there. Um, as we moved towards Virginia, um, we stayed at our the one, our first KOA there at um, right before Natural Bridge. And so it was a beautiful campground and we wanted to kind of linger in the area, but because of the eclipse and coming northeast, um, it's not like out west where there's a lot of public land, right? So um, here everything's owned by people and there's a lot of campgrounds and they're privately owned and there's a lot of state campgrounds. But unfortunately, once you leave Tennessee and kind of into Virginia, there. The, the northern part of Virginia, going to West Virginia, a lot of the campgrounds are closed. And so the private campgrounds that are open year round are the ones that are open. And so a lot of people were traveling for the eclipse. And being that it was close to that time, they were like price getting something crazy, like a back end with nothing but water and electric was like $65 a night. And that's ridiculous. And everything else was like 75, 80 to a hundred dollars a night. So we didn't get a chance to linger as much as we would like to have in the different States taking our time to get here, but we kept going and we ended up in Hershey, Pennsylvania. And that technically was never a part of the destination we were going to, yeah, I know, it's crazy. I know uh, we were going to try to hug the coast. So originally, the plan was to head through Virginia up into D.C. and kind of hover around in that area and kind of hit the coast, like Ocean City and Maryland, and then go up to Jersey, Ocean City there, cross on over into New York, and then come up the way we, we came through Connecticut and all those states. But the as we were looking at the different campgrounds going that way, it was just a hundred better. And they knew they can get it because they are the only ones open. So if you want to come, you have no choice but to choose one of those because there's no other space and, and the state parks are not open. So we detoured to Hershey Park, uh, Hershey, um, not Park, Hershey, Pennsylvania, and managed to find a place that 
went up to $100 a night the day we left. It was crazy, but it was nice. And so if you've never been to Hershey, Pennsylvania, it is really a cool area, right? So the town has these lights that look like Hershey Kisses. I did a, view, a, a video on the museum, which was completely awesome. And it was only like 10 bucks to get in, but it was worth it. And then they have the Hershey World, which is connected to Hershey Park. And that's free, except for, you know, the little uh, rides. They kind of, hi, they kind of nickel and dime you for the rides. I mean, for, for the, the activities in Hershey World. Like you can go and create your own candy bar and give it a name. You could take the tour and go around and, and look at how they make it and all that good stuff. But it's like $22 for this, $13 for that. And then you could take the trolley and it takes you like on this historical tour of Hershey because uh, Hershey himself kind of created this town around the factory. And it was a, a cool little, hi, hi, you guys. It was like a cool little um, step back in time of how this town even came together. And I tried to do a little video of it, black and white. Uh, if you like historical things, it's, it's, it's a great little couple minute video to watch. So I tried to do something on that. And so while we were there, it could pretty much rain every day. And so it was hard to kind of just like get out. So we were there for a few days right after Easter, we left and we said, okay, we weren't far from Connecticut. We're going to go. So you guys saw the video of trying to meander through New York and we went through the, the Northern part of New York. So it was like the Bronx area across the Washington bridge and funny story about getting through New York. As soon as we got ready to get on the bridge, there's two signs, right? One says commercial truck vehicles, and trucks over here, right? And then the other says the tunnel is vehicles. So we went through the tunnel with vehicles. And as soon as you get ready to go under in the tunnel or on that bridge, it says no trucks, no trailers, no campers, you know, with propane and all that kind of stuff. And there's no exit. There's no way of getting off or turning around or none of that. By the time you see this sign, it's too late. And so I was like kind of freaking out a little bit. I was like, so we have no choice but to keep going. And so Cedric was like, okay, so how do you turn around? It's like, no, we're, we're here. We're committed now. We're going to keep going. And we were the only truck camper in there and all these cars zooming past. Thankfully, there was no police or nothing you know, bad happened. And usually when we travel, we turn the propane tanks off. Um, and everything, but that was not the case going through there. We had all this stuff off. So it was okay. We made it to the other side and it was like playing Tetris, you know, lane jumping and people jumping in front of you. And we had made plans to come back to New York because we always wanted to go and kind of just meander around and see some of the museums, go to Central Park and all that kind of stuff. But we just didn't make it back down that way once we hit Connecticut. Um, we got into Connecticut. We stayed at a great KOA and I started to do a video about it, but it was like raining pretty much every single day. But we got a chance to do a couple things. And so one of, one of the things we did in the area that I was just dying to do, if you haven't got a chance, check out the video of the submarine. Now, this submarine is in the water. So you're going in a submarine underwater. It's submerged and it's at the Navy base. So this particular museum is connected to the Navy base and it's the oldest submarine. Um, the guy said that it was the oldest submarine. I'll just stop right there before I start lying to you. That's what he told me. So I'm just I'm telling you. But it was the coolest thing, right? So when you come into the building, you just walk right in. And then I, what I, part I love the most about the museum is like as soon as you walk in the door, they have these old guys, right, with their caps on and whatever war they've been in and everything. And they tell you all about this machinery, all about these submarines, as if they built it with their own two hands. And this particular guy actually served on the submarine we were going into. He had actually been on that and served on it. And he was explaining to us the panel and everything. Um, and I can post that video guy if you guys are interested, where he kind of just explains what this is for, this is about, what's that about. And it was just so cool. So you go in and then you walk out, you get on the, the little plank that takes you on, and then you go down 
into the submarine and boy is it tight it is super tight in there but it is the coolest things and a little 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 navy fact women are not allowed on submarines only men that's a, that's the only men can be on the submarines they're out at sea i think he said for three months at a time and then they come back because they have to do food and you know and and waste and all that kind of stuff to do the maintenance yeah the spaces were super tight i i mean they were cramming people in spaces that should not sleep people but they made it happen so that was one of the coolest parts um the video that came out today was of this uh tremble fort and this was like the last line of defense for the military for the army for the navy Whenever people came into the harbor, they could shoot cannons out of this particular fort. So it is stupid old. And how we got this tour is we showed up to the state park that it's in. And it's on the waterfront. And it's a beautiful park. You can walk around it. You can have lunch there. The park is open itself all year round. But the museum and the fort was not. And so we happened to pull up and I was like, oh man, you know, it's closed. And so one of the guys, the, the guys that work for the park, he was driving by and I stopped him and I was like, hey, when will this all be open? You know, maybe I thought maybe it would be open weekends, you know, and he's like, no, not to May 1st. And I was like, oh, we'll be gone by then. He was like, well, where are you headed? So I, you know, kind of gave him a brief description. Hey, you know, we're traveling, we're passing through, we're headed to Maine. We're leaving in a couple of days. So he was like, would you guys like a private tour? And I was like, heck yeah. And so he's like, well, come on, I'll open up the, he said, I'll open up the, the fort for you and you could just walk through and, and see, you know, whatever you want to take, whatever video you want. And I was like, seriously? And he was like, yeah. So that was super cool. So he went and unlocked all the doors and the big gate. And he was like, when you're done, just knock on the door, let me know, I'll come back and lock it all up. So we got a chance to take a private tour of it and just kind of read everything and it's just like historical like people just it looks like people just got up and left everything just like it was even though i know that they've done some staging too it was still super cool to kind of go in there and not have a whole lot of people where you gotta wait and, you know and folks you know moving around and everybody trying to see the same thing so that was really really cool and he was going to take us on a tour of the museum but he wasn't ready to go in that part yet. And it was totally fine. So I was just grateful that he allowed us to, to, to see that part. Um, the other video we did, uh, if you guys have ever seen Flea Market Flip, that TV show. Has everybody ever seen the TV show Flea Market Flip? Well, anyway, whenever that show comes on, it starts at the elephant truck, antique flea market in New England. And I can remember being home saying, man, one day I would really love to go and see that and just experience that and go there because I like flea markets. I like I like old stuff, right? And so we went, we got up early and it was like an hour drive. So we drove there and it was packed. I mean, like parking was almost non-existent and it wasn't even fully open for the season yet. They hadn't even had the vendors out. It was just the first opening weekend. And that was super, 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 super cool. And you got a chance to just be there as you saw it on TV. And so we were able to do that. We went to Rhode Island because we were like four miles from Rhode Island. And um, you're distracting me. You can see. We were like four miles from Rhode Island. So it was a quick drive. And we went to the beach area over there, kind of just toured around and seeing some stuff. So it was really, really a cool experience. So, um, by the time we were ready to leave, they called and told us, hey, you guys, if you want to come on and arrive early, you can. And I was like, great. So we're here with another couple that, that got here early as well. And we got a chance to ride through Rhode Island and Massachusetts and see Boston. And here we are. And OK, they say this place is Maine. It's not. It To me, it's more like New Hampshire, right? Because and the only reason why I say that is because here it is right up the street, maybe a block, the phone says, welcome to Maine. And so you're pretty much in New Hampshire area. 
you just it's like crossing the street in your main go back across the street you're in new hampshire so this area is basically more new hampshire than maine but we're like an hour away from portland maine and uh an hour away from like the coast so it's pretty cool but technically i feel like we're in new hampshire i'm just i'm just that's just how i feel but we made it. We got here yesterday and it was nice to be able to pass through. And we're the the cool part about where we are where we are, it's like we're centrally located, right? So you have um Mass Boston, Massachusetts, an hour from here. So it's a day trip. So if we ever wanted to wake up one morning on our day off, you'd be like, Hey, let's go to Boston. We can be there in an hour. Leave here at eight and you're there by nine, right? So we're an hour from Boston. We're about, and I would say about 45 minutes from Portland, Maine. So we can drive there. We are close to Portmouth, I think, Portmouth, New Hampshire. We're about 30 minutes from there. So we are like maybe an hour and 15, 20 minutes from Bar Harbor, I think. And there's a ferry that goes over to Nova Scotia. So our plans for this summer is to make sure that our ports are here so we can make it over to Nova Scotia, Canada on the boat and spend a night over there. So I'm really excited about that. And all of this is uncharted territory for us because we've never been this far northeast. And so all of this is going to be very, very exciting. Um, if you're just joining the live, thank you for coming. If you'd like to uh, Give a shout out inside of the chat and I can acknowledge you and say hi to you properly. It looks like we got Doc here, my one of my favorite girls, her and Margaret. Hey, uh, Destiny was here. So hi, hi, hi to all of you and thank you guys for coming. If you're new to this broadcast, make sure you hit the subscription button. I would love to have your subscribe because right now I'm at 2010 subscribers and I'm about 45 watch time hours away from 3000. So I'm really ecstatic about that. So I'm hoping within the next week or so we can get those numbers knocked out. Um, so yes. So when we arrived here today, they took us on the tour. If you're just joining the live, I was telling everybody earlier that here at this particular campground, they had a snowstorm last week and it kind of just knocked out a lot of trees. So even this is a pretty, this campground is picking up its across the street, like this one part is across the street and you have another part directly across the street. And some of the roads within the two parts, you can't even drive down because there's trees on the ground through, through um, different cabins, but it's a beautiful park. And it's like a two, it's like a, a vacation destination place all by itself. And so that is really cool. And I'm really excited about the summer and getting started and just kind of meeting some new people and getting cranking out some new videos, going some places we've never been. So we were in the Pacific Northwest last summer and now we're in the, um, the Northeast. And so this is going to be a fun, fun summer. We're just going to make it fun. We're going to claim it, right? We're going to say, this is the summer of George and we're going to just have a great time and do some fun stuff. And I'm going to try to do better with cranking out some videos. I'm not really good at the montage videos. Like a lot of people take clips here and clips there. And, and then they kind of voice over and explain stuff. I figure if we, we're going somewhere, I want to take you as if you're going to. So my, my videos are more so geared to, okay, this is where we're going today. I'll take you with me today through this particular activity. And not so much just activity hopping like three things in one video and stuff like that. So I know that it's not traditional and it might take a little longer, um, but that's my style of video. And so I hope that you will take the trip with me. Thank you, Destiny. We did get settled in. When we got here, the power went out and we didn't have any power for about three or four hours. And so that was something. And they still haven't turned the water on yet in the whole park because they want to make sure that it's not going to freeze again, that it's not going to be cold up again. It's supposed to warm up this weekend, be in the 60s. But um, thus far, it's, it's, we, didn't, we didn't have any water. So we had to fill up, we had to keep like filling up the tanks. And one of the guys here was so kind, he ran a water hose from the well to us 
so we could have some water. And so right now we are on borrowed water and tonight we have lights and I am super excited about that. And um, like normal, whenever you think everything's okay, then you realize something else is amiss. And uh, we went to turn on the pump for the water pump and then that was on the fritz. Of course, I had to try to figure out what's going on with that. And he's got it working, but it's not 100%. So pray for us on that. You know, it's one of those things that if you're not using it all the time, you don't realize that it's something malfunctioning with it until you need to use it. And that's not the time to want to find out that it's malfunctioning. So I'm happy that he's here, that he can take care of that kind of stuff because um, that's not my expertise at all. So, um, yeah. So that's the exciting thing that um, here they have some river tubing. And I really want to invest in a, a GoPro because with stuff like that, you could take it in the water with my phone. Not so much. If something happened to it, then I don't have a phone and then I won't be able to do anything. And I don't want that. So one day, hopefully I can invest in a GoPro. So we'll be able to, when we do some water activities, be able to do that and um, show you guys. So I don't know who, who's been on this part of the country that can kind of give us some, hey, you need to go check out such and such and such. I know a few people told me Arcadia National Park is over here and I got my National Park book. So I'm really excited to be able to get some stamps in that bad boy. And um, we'll be here to October. So their last day here is October. Their last day open is October 15th. So I am looking forward to some of those beautiful New Hampshire main leaf changes for fall. And then we'll start, you know, planning our exit in September. We're going to go next as far as that's concerned. We'll probably go to Florida because that's where my mom is and be down there with them and the grandbabies for um, Thanksgiving or my sisters. But I don't know. That's that's just like so far ahead. I can't even think that far ahead. But yes, so far it has been a real adventure. I would have liked to crank out more videos than I did while we were in Connecticut because there was a lot to see. I would have liked to have gone to New York and kind of showed you guys some stuff. But um, finances and the weather just did not permit. And so hopefully we're here. We'll be able to get you enough content that will satisfy your hunger for travel. Um, yeah, Doc, six months. Um, usually we're we're in one place about four or five months, and that seems like a long time. But we're going to stay the whole season here, which is six months, and we'll take off and figure things out then. Because we usually leave like in September. So it's just an additional five weeks, five or six weeks. And um, I'm not in any real hurry to get, I'm, I'm this year, I don't think I'm going back to Tennessee. I'm a, it, I just, I don't think I'm going to do that. So wherever we are, the kids will have to come out there. But I don't think I'm going back like I did and get stuck there. I'm not interested in doing that. And so I'm excited to see what this area has to offer. Um, we worked it out to where we won't be working every single day. So it's like four days on, three days off, five days on, two days off. So you'll have some days to to really like be off and kind of explore around, do stuff, and then take a day to rest before you have to go back. So that's going to be really, really nice. And so I'm excited about that part of it. Um, going back to work like on a schedule, it, it takes some adjusting because you've gotten to the point to where you're used to kind of getting up when you feel like it, and now you got to get up on the schedule. But okay, you 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 fall back into it, and, and you you'll be all right. Um, does anybody have any plans for the summer? Anybody doing anything fun? Going anywhere cool? Yes. Well, we'll see. Cause I, I've this is all I've ever seen was on TV. You know, it was an old TV show. The Bob Newhart show took place, I think, in New Hampshire, and it was his brother Larry and his other brother Larry. No, Daryl and his other brother Daryl and his other brother Daryl. So New Hampshire or was it Vermont? One of the two. That's the only that's the only thing I remember about this about this area was the Bob Newhart show. Yes. Uh will we have some days off? Yep. Yeah, we're gonna be working four days on, three days off for right now until the summer picks up. 
So I guess their summer is kind of slow, slow starting. Um, most campgrounds, like when we're out west, their their summer kind of picks up May first. Their their campground opens May first, but their official busy months are not until uh, I think he said it was June, the end of June, July, and August. So for those are their busy months, and then we'll go to five two four three five two four three. So as of right now, we'll be working four days on and have three days off. So that'd be great to have some time to explore. And then when the day, busy days kick up, we'll work five days on and two days off. And then the final we work four days on, three days off. Um, it kind of helps break it up. So you're working, you know, 40 hour days, you end up working 32 hour days, which is not bad at all. Um, and then you, 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 you leave out with a decent check when you can do it that way. And then you can, you can travel a little bit. So, uh, my first day is tomorrow, as a matter of fact, and I have to report to nine that the schedule won't be starting Monday. He, he's a lucky duck. He got the weekend off. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that they, uh, have some tree removal company people coming in and a lot of what he would be doing, they can't do until they get the trees up. So uh, once the tree removal company comes in over the weekend and I get all this stuff taken care of, then the guys that are here for maintenance can come in and start doing their thing. And so being I'm working um, registration and in the store front desk um, is pretty much indoors. So you just kind of putting things up and putting stock away and kind of helping like it is to um, open up the campground and get ready for the floodgates. To, for people to come in. And they said they're already fully booked for June and July. So, wow, it's it's going to be busy. And they have, I kid you not, RV spaces, at least, at least 200 RV spaces. That's just RV spaces. That's not the 20 different cabins styles they have. That's not the tent spaces. That's not even their summer monthly people. So it's going to be busy. And it and and they have a water slide here. They have tubing in the river. They got the little uh, lake for uh, fishing. They have golf carts you can rent. Um, they got a theater. They got a game. I mean, it's, it's a big place and they got a lot going on. So a lot of people are probably just coming here to make this their vacation destination because the kids can run around and there's so much for them to do. And then they have activities and arts and crafts and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, 200 spaces. That is a lot. It is a lot because they, they have, I think he had about 10 acres. And so you have five on one. No, it's more than that. He said more than that. I can't think of it. But like I said, this campground is split up on, two sides of the street. So on one side, you have some cabins, some spaces, and then they have their own RVs that they rent out. Like, like you can book one of their RVs to stay in at a site if you don't have an RV, but you want to camp in one. So they have their RVs that they put into sites that back up to the river. And then they have these like uh, military style tents that they set up as well. It's a lot. It is a lot. And I cannot wait for the campground to get up and running so I can do a video showing you guys this place in its full effect heyday, right? So when it starts up and show you just exactly the, the madness that will be taking the place all around us. Um, I really am, Destiny. I'm going to take full advantage of our days off. Um, me and Cedric are kind of like foodies. And so there are a few like a uh, marketplace, like if you've been to Seattle and you know, they got um, the marketplace, right? There. What is the name of that place? It's a famous place. Everybody goes there whenever they're in Seattle, down by the waterfront, the market. I can't think of it. Um, Pipe Place. Yeah. Is, is it Pipe Place? I can't think of it. It might be Pipe Place. It's a market, right? You go, you buy food, fish, flowers, it's marketplace. Well, they have two of those. So you have one in Boston that's right off the water, and it's a marketplace. And then you have one in Portland that's a marketplace. And I would I love to try local cuisine, right? Local foods. So it, it's really cool. I'm going to Missouri this summer. 
Oh, well, congratulations. Congratulations. My goodness, the Army. That was a tough one. My sister was in the Navy. My brother was in the Marines. My grandfather was in the Army. And my stepfather was in the Air Force. So I've had just about all of them covered. And I've had a couple of cousins into the Army. One of them is still in the military. He's still in the Army. And so, wow, that, that's not a choice you take lightly, signing your life over to Uncle Sam. But congratulations to her. We're going to appreciate her service. So, yes, ma'am. Um, I will be doing some cooking video. Oh, you guys, I started this um, camper herb garden, right? And I'm so excited about it. I, 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 I do not have a green thumb, so I have to hide my thumb. So that's why I'm starting with herbs. Um, so I bought some plants. I got some mason jars. And what I'm trying to do is have like an indoor garden. What I didn't figure was the filtration part of out of this mason jar without the water pooling at the bottom and killing my plant. So I have this bright idea of I'm going to dump it all out. I'm going to put some rocks at the bottom and it's going to be strategically placed rocks. So as the water drain out of the soil into the rocks, there will be a, a straw at the bottom that when the water pools down there, I can pour the water out through the straw. I'm going to check and see if that works. But I really do want to, I'm growing some herbs. So I have it in my can and I'm going to be following that progress. Hey, sis, I'm going to be um, following that progress of growing my herbs. So I got some basil. I got some cilantro. I'm going to do some rosemary. And I got, uh, I'm going to, once we get in our space space, because when we got here, we're in the, we're in the field luxury area. So we can see how the other half lives in the luxury area of the campground. But where we're going, there's trees in our spot. Like there's like big trees and debris and everything. So once they clean that up next week, Tuesday, we'll be moving into our space space. And I'm going to do some lives outside by the campfire. Right. So we can we can talk and hang out by the campfire. Right. And so uh, once we get there, I have a. a like a portable herb garden where I'm going to build, um, not herb garden, a portable tub, like a, a garden, like a garden tub that I'm going to set up and put my lettuce in it. So I have some chard, I have some green leaf lettuce and some red leaf lettuce that I'm going to be growing. So I'm going to plant those and I'll probably do a video of me planting those and we're going to kind of follow the progress on the herbs and on the uh, on my little my garden, and with this one, it has like these little holes where the water can drain out, and I'll have like my little garden. So I wanted to kind of grow some veggies. So we're gonna have chard. I love chard, uh, chard and bok choy, but they didn't have any bok choy seeds, and I think that's because it's an Asian cabbage. But so we're gonna do chard, red lettuce, green lettuce, the cilantro, the rosemary, and the basil. And so I'm really excited about my garden. I'm going to do some, I'll, I'll do a video of me redoing it and we'll follow the progress. And I'm going to do some um, alfalfa sprouts. I love alfalfa sprouts. And I love those. It's really, really easy. All you need is a mason jar, some water, and some seeds. And you pretty much put the seeds in the jar. You kind of rinse them really, really good. Turn them upside down. Let the water drain out. And then you turn around and then you put it more water and you fill it up to the top and then you let it sit in the water overnight, pour it out. And then every day you're rinsing it, turning it upside down and the sprouts start bursting out of the seeds. And by the end, in, in about seven days, you have a jar full of alfalfa sprouts and I love it in salad and on burgers and stuff like that. So, um, yes. So when I start that, I will do a video on all of it. Like I'll do a video on redoing the, the herbs as well as putting the garden together. And then I'll end it with the alfalfa sprouts and then we'll watch the progress of all of it. So yes, I'm excited about that. So uh, we're going to try my hand with my green thumb and got to be careful with bugs. Today we found a tick. I got on noodle. Oh my goodness. And I was about to freak out and we got him off. I think he bit him. And so what I did was clean it with some alcohol and put some um, charcoal on it. And it took it down tremendously. Charcoal is good for getting poison out. So 
Mu had a hard day. He didn't even know he was being attacked, but his daddy was rubbing him all up. And then we noticed that he had something huge crawling near his neck. And so I snatched it off and said, killed it. And I was like, took a picture of it. It was a tick. So I think what we need to do is probably get Noodle um, groomed and cut down really, really low while we're here just so we could see stuff like that on him. Cause I don't want my baby suffering and I don't want nothing biting him and I don't want him to get sick while he's here and we start running up a vet bill. So pretty much that's where we are. We have met land in New Hampshire, Maine and uh, getting ready to start chapter two of this summer. I'm really excited about the summer. And if you guys, um, want to be a part of our summer and you want to see some more videos and you enjoy the videos we put out, I mean, consider becoming a Patreon member. I have one on there. It's like 10 bucks a month. And I would, we would love that. And we'd just be using that for gas so we could go make videos and turn out some great content for you guys because we love y'all and we like to take you with us. And y'all have become like my extended family. Like uh, some of you, I talk to you regularly. And so I, I like to take you with me. Um, I could stand to learn a little bit more about making videos and making them a little bit more engaging, but I only know how to be myself. So it is what it is at some point, but I'm excited for this. I really, I am so excited for the summer. I'm excited of who we're going to meet and what we're going to do. I'm excited to meet new people and talk to people. I'm excited to meet my coworkers. I'm excited, period. I'm excited to make it to the coast. Um, I'm one thing I do miss the most is my camera. I had to sell it, but, um, I love photography and I love pictures and I have a website that I've, I've been working on where I can sell some of my pictures as screen savers and they're only like three or $4 a piece and you can download it and use it as a screen saver for your computer or, um, wallpaper for your cell phone and stuff like that. So I'm trying to find some ways that I can keep what I love to do going because it is, oh my goodness, I'm about to burn up. The heat is just going. So, um, yeah, so I'm working on that. And once I get that done, I will post that. And if you guys would like to purchase something there, you could do that. Don't forget about our merch store. Once we hit 3000, you'll be able to see the merch store on here. And it'll have all the content here. And I'm going to put some more stuff up here. I lost my thumb drive with all my stuff on it. And so I got to tear this camper up and look for it because it's about this big. And I I downloaded all my pictures, all my files and all that stuff on there. So I have to find it. This camper's only but so big. But so I got to look for it. Oh, Pat, you're welcome. I enjoy doing it. It's fun. I, I just, I love to explore and see things. So that's why you guys, if, if you enjoy it, consider it. Just Patreon, $10, just a cup of coffee. You'd be sacrificing one cup of coffee one time to, to be a Patreon member for $10 a month. So consider that. And all my information is always underneath the video. When you go into the button and where it has the, the uh, description and then you hit it and it drop, drop down box, all my information is there. So you never have to go hunting down and on the main page it's under the about. So you can always take a look there if that's something you're interested in, because we'd love to have your support. Um, thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And I hope you guys will join me for part two tomorrow of our Bible study. I'm going to find a way where we can do that, where it's more interactive, where I maybe I need to stop and kind of interact with you guys in the chat. For when we do our study, I'm so used to presenting things that I don't engage you, I think, as much as I should during our Bible study. So that's tomorrow at eight o'clock. Um, I put the, the, the notification up. So under the live, you'll see it. You can hit notify me and it'll remind you that we're going to be doing it at eight o'clock. We're just finishing up chapter two in Luke. And I redid the last video, the one for Matthew and Luke, I had to re, uh, re record that because of some audio issues and because I needed to uh, make some corrections. So I had to redo it and upload that again. So if you want a refresher, you can look at that one and be ready for it tomorrow. Um, 
Thank you. I try to do the best I can because whenever I study, I learn too. And I like to make notes. Like I like to read and make notes. And I like the book that I have because it has an app. And so sometimes I'm reading the book, but I'm listening to the app and it kind of helps me, especially when you're, when you're doing Bible stuff and you're doing those hard names and you kind of hear how it's pronounced. And that helps a lot too. And it gives me the opportunity to underline and follow along and um, read it with the, with the app. So I enjoy that a, a lot. And so um, we're going to be getting into the meat and potatoes soon. We, if we want to be students of the Bible, we have to go through the foundation part. But then we start getting really into the life of Christ after it will probably not be the next one, but the one after that. Because right now we're just going through his childhood and then we'll jump to his cousin, John the Baptist. And then John the Baptist paves the way when Christ starts his ministry. So it's going to be, it's going to be really cool. If you guys can just stick, hang in there with me. Um, I'm going to try to loosen it up a little bit so it could be more interactive with me. Maybe I'll stop and ask if there's any questions or read the chat and kind of engage you guys. Um, normally we do it like on Zoom so everybody can kind of see each other and talk when they need to, but we're doing it on YouTube. So I need to be more mindful of that and more aware of the chat. So if you guys are interested in coming, it'll be tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday. So it'll be tomorrow at eight o'clock. And I'm excited to to meet you guys there and, and, and take whatever questions you have and we do our study. Um, but other than that, I am excited to be back on the road. I'm excited to be in a new place. I'm excited for the summer. I cannot wait to get started. There's a few things I know I need to do. Like I'm, I'm going to be working on trying to get me a GoPro or a camera. I would prefer a camera just because I have photography and my therapy right? It's, it's that thing when you're feeling like you need an outlet, you grab the camera, you head into the woods and you can find beauty in everything. Like in anything, you can find some beautiful stuff. And as a matter of fact, when we get done, I'll post a few pictures in our community. Um, if you want to go to over to the community tab, I'll post a few pictures that I've taken so you guys can kind of see, see, see my work. And, um, let me know what you think. So I I have found sanity in photography. It's one of those things from start to finish. It's the focus whenever I'm feeling a little out of control, like my anxiety is getting the best of me and and I start feeling kind of panicky. Uh, I could tell you on the way here, I had several panic attacks, but I was proud of myself because I was able to kind of work through it without running to take my medicine for it, my medication that kind of helps. But it's, it's one of those things where you start feeling yourself. Because usually when you start walk, walking towards the deep end, you, you kind of feel it. You kind of feel yourself getting away from yourself, right? And so I usually am able to take my camera and go for a walk. And, and it's, it's, it, it starts from the second you pick it up, right? Where you have to check the settings. I like to shoot on manual. So I like to tell the camera what I want to see. So I, I control all the settings. So if when I pick it up and I, I do my settings and I set it for what I want and how much light and what I want to look like, and then you get zoom in on that little drop of rain on a leaf and you get that, that clarity of something so simple and so small but has such a big, beautiful impact and you shoot it. And then you take different pictures all around and then you come back and then the editing and you take the image and you make it something, you, you do it in a way to where people can see what you saw, the beauty in the photo, and then you share it. And then people are able to kind of live vicariously through your lens, through your eyes, and see the things that you found beautiful and serene. And so my camera has always been my outlet for my depression and my anxiety because it forces me, A, to get out in nature so you feel a little grounded, right? You could reset your ears to the birds chirping and the calmness of your environment. And then you, you're forced to think about something other than stress, other than 
your worries. You start focusing on the camera and setting, and then you look for beautiful things. So you divert your attention to nature and the beautiful things that God put out for us to reset our minds, to calm ourselves. And then you take a picture of them. And then I always come back and I, whenever I'm editing anything or I'm reading anything, hi, Mr. Mr. Dixon, whenever I'm reading anything, I mean, uh, doing anything, I always listen to a podcast. I, I, at the risk of sounding all religious, I have a few people that I love to listen to their podcast because I really walk away feeling like I learned something. So for me to keep that vibe of, of an open mind of learning and creative juices flowing, I listen to a podcast or a sermon or some music. And it puts me in this, this, uh, this area of, of, imagination and and it helps me whenever I'm doing anything artsy and then I I in my mind I can see what it is that I want to show you guys and this does a lot for my psyche to do it so my one of my goals is to get another camera I, w- I would love to have a camera because I had a, I had a camera I have had to and it, it has just been something I have learned to absolutely love. And so I'm hoping that while I'm here, I can capture the beauty that is the Pacific North, I mean, the Atlantic area, the, the, the Northeast area, and bring you some beautiful photos. You would want to purchase as a screen server and just look at it and know, I know the person who took this picture, right? And for my Patreon people, I post free uh, photos that you can download all the time there. So there's a lot of pictures that I've taken that are free downloads to my Patreon members. So um, I am thinking about starting my daily diary as in a vlog of, of, of just intimate moments with me. And so I'm going to be posting some of those on my um, over in my Patreon page where we'll have these one-on-one and, and start a community there. It will be a safe space where we could kind of just talk. And I'm going to be telling you about the challenges of day to day and what we're doing. And, and as I learn little things that everything won't be on YouTube, I'll be putting some stuff that'll just exclusively be there. So, um, like I said, just consider it's only a sacrifice of one cup of coffee, uh, for one day to be a part of the Patreon. We'd love to have your, um, your support. So yes, uh, lots of fish and seafood. Now, seafood. I like fish, but I only like certain types of fish. I don't eat crabs. I don't eat shrimp. I don't eat clams. I don't eat lobster and all that kind of stuff. But I do love salmon. And I love, um, my dad used to buy this fish all the time, um, trout. So I like trout and I like salmon. And that's about the extent of my seafood, my seafood liking. But I definitely would love to try whatever they have locally here and just kind of be a part of it. So I can't wait to do some videos and be able to get out and show you guys some stuff. Um, I, I just feel it. I feel like this is going to be a wonderful summer and I am truly excited about it. So you guys don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and don't forget to watch the videos. I know my numbers have kind of dipped down, especially since I haven't been doing anything for a while. So I'm hoping that you guys, as you get these notifications that you will start showing up and watching these videos and giving me some feedback and letting me know what you think um, on each one of them. So um, I'm excited and I hope you guys are excited too. And I hope you will stick it out with me. We've been, we've come a long way, baby. And so last summer we were Pacific Northwest. This summer we're in the Northeast and we're going to have a good time and a good summer. And I love you guys to the moon and back. Be safe. Thank you for watching. Hit the notification bell. Um, hit, give me a thumbs up if you haven't already. I appreciate y'all coming to the live. And don't forget about our Bible study tomorrow at 8 o'clock. Um, and I will see you guys then. I love you. Good night. Let me find this mouse. Good night, y'all. See you tomorrow. Make sure you come. See you tomorrow.